Hello there. How's it going? Wow, it has been a while, hasn't it, since I've done a proper, legit YouTube video. I do apologize for this. My original intention was to knock out a video like every couple of weeks. And uh, that was just not possible because running your own business is basically doing about seven individual jobs a day, every day. <laughs> And uh, I've just been mentally busy. Um, so much has happened, it feels, since the last time I, I did this. Um, Jeddah Workshop is now a year old. Well, a bit older than that now, about a year and one, two months or something. We're, um, we're at 6,000 followers on Instagram. How good's that? If you don't follow me already, jump over there uh, at Jeddah Workshop. What else? I mean, you're here to watch a build video, right? So, here's the old Tuscan. This is the first Tuscan I ever made. Uh, the video is made up of multiple different helmets, so just in case you're like, eh? That's not that helmet. Um, it's just because I've built loads of these since, and um, I've just sort of amalgamated different things into it, but hopefully it all makes sense. It's a it's a really, I'm not going to say simple build, it is pretty simple, but, you know, you have to think about things, at least, still. And um, what it is, is a really fun build. I find, once you get down to doing the wraps, it, this is the most therapeutic part. Um, but it, it is actually relatively easy in comparison to building like a helmet like this, because there's barely any filling and sanding. It's just on the accessories. Um, so the real therapeutic part of it for me is doing the wraps because you just kind of zone out and uh, Yeah, and then you have a Tuscan helmet at the end of it um, So I without further ado Enjoy the video. I'll, I'll see you in a bit Alrighty, so when you get your parts they uh, they might look a bit different because I've actually changed the design of uh, Some of the Tuscan parts since recording this video the binoculars now have a base and so do the blood spitters um, but basically it may have some support material on and you want to remove that so to do so use a really sharp craft knife and be extremely careful when you're cutting the perforation lines. Always try to cut away from yourself because it's, it's easy to slip. I know I'm not doing that here, I like to live dangerously, what can I say? But yeah, these binoculars will have a base and the top support material is easy to get out. The bottom you may have to cut um, the perforation line and at the base and then I use a flattered screwdriver to sort of just push it through but be really careful not to break that center line. Okay so onto the mask and um, basically we're just gonna use a file to get rid of any sharp edges or stray filament. Basically that's just where some support material has been to build up to the print on the bottom and it's the angle that I print it at, and it just, it kind of leaves jaggedy sort of lines. Um, and they can just be a bit sharp and, you know, you don't want to cut yourself. So, onto the gluing. You want to get some super glue. Um, I use just generic Gorilla Glue. Um, you can start wherever you like. I'm doing the, the snout here. So, you basically want to do a little dab of glue every sort of inch or so around the print. Um, you also want to sand the edges before doing this, just to give you um, a nice key for the glue to set. And then stick the snout on, and then what you want to do is grab a soldering iron, um, one that you don't use for electronics because this kind of this process knackers it up, but it works just fine for prints. You basically want to weld the seam lines together. Um, don't don't stay too long on any spot because you will burn a hole right through the print really easily obviously PLA has a very low melting point and that's how we print with it but um, this process works really well just to if you do the inside and the outside and all that does is hold the parts together as you um, as the glue sets so you don't have to you know sit there and hold them with your hand um, the dome may have some kind of stringy filament on the inside and that's because I don't print supports for that area because you don't need it and doing it this way saves a ton of material. 
but it just it does just leave a bit of stringy bits so just use a heat gun really quickly you know don't be going for longer than five or six seconds just heat it up and then press it down with your finger so here I am working on the back and the front piece of the helmet I'm just sanding the edges that I'm going to join with glue um, with some I think it's either 120 or 60 grit sandpaper this is just a board that I stuck some sandpaper onto genius invention I uh, stole that one from Galactic Armory, Armory. cheers Aaron <laughs> so I sand both sides and all it does is just smooth that bit down um, and give you a good key um, obviously you're not going to see the seam lines on the Tuscan helmet um, but this is a, the exact same process I use for you know building a clone or any helmet if any helmet I'm joining parts together so again dab of super glue every inch or so and then join them together I do it upside down because the top part is flat and the bottom part isn't I use bulldog clips on the opposite side that I'm going to join because that just helps it keep together while I do this I then line it up really precisely and then same again just weld the seam lines together with a soldering iron just just run along along it, along it sort of medium speed and uh, inside and outside again and once you have done that jump over to the other side and do exactly the same now it's time to do the dome and it's entirely the same process dab of glue every inch line it up stick it on and use your soldering iron so now you have a completed Tuscan base helmet and you can see I can pick the parts up um, and it's strong enough but you want to pretty much let that set sort of overnight okay time to move on to the other part so this is one of the top spikes and um, sometimes the print quality varies if it's a bit too kind of liney I just use a, um, a file just to just to you know help me with the smoothing process so this stuff is really good for um, beginners if you've never worked on a helmet before this is called Lechler spat o rapid 1k stopper I will put it in the description below but basically it's a filler for pinholes so it's what um, you know people might use on a car body but at their very end stages because you can't use it on um, holes over three millimeters deep but it's really good for doing all your parts so basically smear it over everything and do a thin layer and let that dry okay now it's time to move on to the sanding you're going to be doing a lot of this so um, enjoy it I start off with 120 grit I sand every part all over and then I move down to 240 grit I might even move on to 400 at this stage um, it depends how smooth I've got it then I spray all the parts with this stuff which is incredible it's called spray putty and in my opinion um, a lot of people use high gold primer I think for a beginner this stuff is so much better um, it's just a, gives a really good finish and it helps build just fill in any other lines um, you're probably gonna need to fill again and sand again at this stage but because your spray putty is you fill you've sprayed it all over you get a nice even coat and an even color so you can actually spot the imperfections that might still be there if there are then grab your spatter rapid again and just go over them the nose piece here that I'm doing is notoriously difficult just because it's kind of curved and it's got some deep lines on there so I'm doing the whole thing on that the other parts might just need you know a little dab here and there they might not need the whole thing if they do that's cool as well um, sanding and filling is a process which takes um, a bit of getting used to to figure out what you're doing and what effect you're having on because it can feel on it because it can feel like you're just filling putting stuff on sanding it off and going well what's happening here why am I just repeatedly doing this but trust me you get better and better at it and it's a fine line you basically want to fill and sand but you don't want to sand it all off otherwise you just you are just wasting your time but you want to sand it smooth and fill and sand it smooth 
so that the whole surface of each part is even, if that makes sense. Um, so all I'm doing here is just building up layer by layer um, and spraying it with spray putty again just to see how it looks and these parts as you can see are now looking pretty damn smooth. So your, your aim uh, when you're sanding is to get down to 600 grit but you have to do it in layers so you start off with 120, 240, fill it again, sand it with 240, 400, fill it again and then you might need to start to, um, sand it with 240 again then 400 and then finally 600 and it will make sense because you'll get it down to be so smooth once you get to 600 you're like oh my god this is incredible um, and you can see how smooth they are and basically it's then ready to primer so I just use a regular grey primer spray paint and as you can see everything's looking good they're not absolutely perfect but it just depends how far you want to go um, and as I say you do get better every time once your um, primer is primed you want to move on to the chrome paint um, I just use a Jensen's mirror chrome paint here which is really good I've since moved on to using um, Montana chrome which is equally as good and I just I use that just because you get more in the bottle basically but both of these brands are really good for chroming I mean look at that it, it, they just look like metal right um, and the paint is a good thick paint so that obviously also adds to the evenness of the surface if there are any sort of slight imperfections you can kind of maybe get away with it a little bit look at that beautiful I don't show it on the video here but here's a little trick basically once you paint something you want to lacquer it and you want to use gloss lacquer on these parts however when you use gloss lacquer it will completely take off the beautiful chrome mirror sh shine that you've got going so a way to get around that is to let the lacquer dry until it's almost dry but not quite just a little bit tacky and then you want to um, spray the chrome again and that will be lacquered and bring back the shine for you okay so I'm just um, using some uh, wire mesh here I think this is just generic window screen um, doesn't matter about the color because you can paint it but this is uh, going to be for the eyes and the mouth just to you know hide hide your eyes in your mouth basically so I cut out two parts um, I don't measure it or anything just do it by eye pun intended um, and I cut it you know just with a curved edge so it'll fit nicely on the inside and I spray it black just with a generic matte black spray paint I do both sides um, and obviously let that dry and once we are there you want to um, just grab your helmet and use a hot glue gun to glue it in, in place try not to get any glue on the part where you actually look through because it can just dry kind of white or blue and just be really messy to get off so just be careful I do the exact same for the mouth on the snout okay now we're almost ready to start dressing your actual Tuscan and I use some uh, faux leather in kind of chocolate brown for the mouth that I get from a fabric shop and I use a kind of latte colored um, they call it canvas um, for the wraps I use a men's brown belt for the two main belts a ladies thinner belt for the final one and uh, a nice ladies brown handbag which I use for the leather for the respirator um, and basically measure up your snout you know length and width and you're gonna want a, a long rectangular piece which wraps around it and it's wide enough for the outside of the snout but also the, the the same width on the inside so you can pull it through and then a little bit more to fold back on itself on the inside this will make sense as you're doing it and I, I use um, spray mount to spray the back of it and that kind of holds it in place as I can sort of crinkle it up how I like it and then I sort of finish it off with hot glue now the order of parts here are really important because you can mess it up and I still have to think about it every time I build a Tuscan. I've built 13 or something at this stage and I still have to think about it. But basically it's mouth leather first, then nose, 
Um, I use super glue for the nose, but I also use hot glue just to hold it in place as the super glue sets. Then you want to grab your man's belt. And the man's belt, make sure it is long enough for two whole pieces, basically. And measure it up. And do the you do the front one first because they layer over each other. And again, I use um, spray mount for the back of this so that when I pull it nice and tight, it actually sticks to the leather, the faux leather on the mouth. And then once I've got it to the bottom nice and tight, I use hot glue to sort of seal that end part. And then I do exactly the same for the second part. Then the very end of the men's belt is perfect for the nose piece because it's curved. So you want to cut a little bit off there and, and bend it and then glue that part in you know into place then the the last belt is it's not that obvious to notice on this one because this is my first ever Tuscan build but that last belt there is thinner than the other ones so that's why I use a, a woman's belt because they're generally thinner but it's exactly the same process but don't guess it when you cut it measure it do it by eye by uh, measuring tape whatever you want because that part is obviously a bit longer so, once you've done the snout, don't do the other parts like the blood spitters and stuff because you're going if you put them in first, you're going to make it difficult for yourself to do everything else as in the fabric on the mount on the face piece. So I do the um, the top spikes first and I they thread through the hole in the helmet and I I'd use dab of super glue on the inside and then I I used like either masking tape or some of it stronger like gaffer tape to hold them into place as it sets. I do exactly the same for the binoculars. Um, however, I don't show in this video, but I've started to use um, Millie Putt, which is a two-part putty, on the outside of all the parts. So the top spikes, the binoculars, and the blood spitters. So super glue on the inside, and the Millie Putt on the outside to hold everything into place and make it rock solid. Um, I'm weathering the metal parts here, and I don't know why, because I don't remember doing this, <laughs> and I certainly don't do it anymore. I leave all the weathering right till the end. But, you know, that's just the way I roll, apparently, in the past. Um, but you can see all the parts there are glued on, on the inside. So those blood spitters now have bases, and you thread them from the inside out, so dab a super glue on the inside, and then on the outside, that's where I put the milliput to hold everything into place, so it's not going to move, it tries rock solid. And obviously, when you use the milliput, it's, you know, it's like Play-Doh, basically. You want to make a wiggly worm and wrap it around the parts, but then push it right down to the bottom, so that you can't see it when you start applying the wraps and stuff. You know, you want to be able to hide it, you know, easily. So we'll just get through this completely random early weathering. But yeah, I'm just using some rust colored paint and some black and some brown and using the dry brush method. Ah, here you go. So quick steel is basically exactly what I was just talking about. However, I use milliput because a, um, a packet of quick steel like that is about eight pounds in the UK and packet of milliput is about £4.50. But there you go, That's this is what I was talking about. I'm, I'm not that stupid. I did it on my very first one. <laughs> so now everything is in place for you to start working on the wraps. But you can see it's starting to look like a Tusker. So you grab your canvas and cut just, just sort of a centimetre into it about an inch wide and then rip it because you want that nice jaggedy ripped edge. Um, I am just using some some little pieces um, for the top spikes there and I'm just gluing them on with hot, hot glue and that's basically just so I don't have to worry about wraps sort of not overlapping and seeing the black plastic. I also put some ear holes in, you can see. I think I just used a um, soldering iron just to put, put some holes in so you can hear. Um, I don't think you need to, to be honest. 
as I say, I'd, I'd never built this helmet before, so I was anticipating it being, you know, impossible to hear or whatever because it's quite tight to your head. Um, but yeah, this is just me figuring out how to start doing the wraps. Basically, top tip is only glue one end of it. So you see that bottom part, I'm just dab of glue there, then pull it all over the helmet um, and have it longer than you need and wherever you want to finish on the other side of the helmet just glue that end piece so it's only glued, glued in two small places because then you leave the whole middle bit open and unglued so that you can start threading other um, wraps sort of in and out of each other you know so you get that nice interwoven effect Whereas if, if you glued it all down, that's impossible. And then once uh, you've finished and you're happy with it, basically then glue all the middle parts. And also another top tip, what I've since learned from building many Tuscans is don't start with the wraps. I actually cut much larger pieces of canvas off to almost cover um, all the black plastic parts of the helmet because then I don't have to worry about just endlessly putting wraps on to hide all that black plastic because there's canvas underneath it and if there's just a little bit showing in and out of the wraps and it just looks like more wraps it's so much easier okay so i'm now um weathering the wraps you don't have to do this some people like it clean um i am using an airbrush to do this um obviously if you don't have an airbrush you can't use them but you don't need one um, I think I just got it and was sort of, you know, happy as a pig in muck, just, just using it and figuring it out. But you want to get some, if you are weathering, you want to get some black or some brown dirt sort of in there, um, wherever you want. I put it sort of, I lift up the wraps and have it in the folds. And I then use some uh, nice Yorkshire tea. I use about three bags of Yorkshire tea to then stain the wraps in random parts. And I dry that off with a heat gun. Again, don't spend too long with your heat gun. I then use PVA glue and a water mix. And um, basically I learned this from a, a carpenter. On, I, I'm a photographer and I used to build, you know, set photography sets as well when we were shooting. and. Um, one of the carpenters built these giant canvases and, and he would use this water, PVA glue and water mix because it sort of pulls the canvas tighter and it makes it easier to paint on in a, in a set. Obviously not doing that here, but what it does is it, it gives it that nice dirty desert feel and it also protects the fabric, you know, so it's not going to rot or fall off. It, it just I like it because it just seals everything in nicely and it also spreads any weathering that you've done a bit more naturally. Um, if you do want to add some sand, this is uh, affectionately called Nephew Sand by my friend Kyle because I stole it from my nephew's sand pit. Um, but yeah, then I use pure PVA glue, no water, just in random spots and then I just sprinkle a bit of real sand on top and then, um, you know, I pat it down and that sand's going to stay in only the parts that I've glued. Be very sparingly if you do use this. Um, and I'm just drying off with a heat gun again. I think the sand was a little bit wet when I used it. Um, but yeah, don't go messing about with the heat gun too much because everything in this helmet is made of PLA plastic and you can still melt it at this point and you don't want to do that. Okay, next up. Uh, you want some spray mount and some upholstery foam. Uh, this is only if you want to make the helmet more comfortable to wear, if you're wearing it regularly to cons and stuff. You don't have to do this bit, but I do it for all my customers because it just it's, it just makes the helmet so much nicer. But yeah, I grab some upholsterer's foam from the same fabric shop that I get the canvas and the, the faux leather from. And um, I've experimented with different ways, but I basically cut the donut shape for the, for the dome of the head and then I do a big sort of rectangular block at the back for the base of your skull and then I do two bits on either side for the temples and I find that this is just the sort of most minimal efficient way of padding a helmet so it's going to move with your head and not slide about and I then cover all this up with black felt 
again I get this from the exact same fabric shop and it's gone up by two pounds since the inflation it's now like seven quid a meter ridiculous but anyway if you want a nice helmet these are the links you've got to go to um, if you've watched my live videos or any of you know if you've engaged me on social media you will know that I hate fabric and I hate padding and felt lining because I'm not good at it I don't measure anything I just do it by eye but I do it um, so yeah helmets pretty much ready now it's time to do the respirator so you want to get your uh, your, pre your pretty little pan bag um, I cut down the stitching so that I can um, use you know as much uh, that leather as possible for future builds I'm very efficient like that up here for thinking down here for dancing again I use spray adhesive and I cut it to length measure it I actually do use a ruler for this sometimes and then I seal the end with hot glue oh now these holes I just still have never gotten around to making them wider I will do one day, but basically, I use 5mm diameter aluminium wire. Uh, you can get this off Amazon, it's basically for craft, for you know, people who make stuff. Um, it's also a 501st requirement for the respirator, it's, it has to be 5mm diameter. A customer of mine told me this, so that's why I use it, and that's why I still haven't made the holes of the respirator 5mm and I use a drill, so you can too. Anyway, you don't need a device to bend it. I'm being ridiculous using it. You can just do it with your hands. And uh, that's the basic shape, sort of rectangle or a slight curve at the back and then two little bendy pieces are at the bottom and they should just slot into place. I don't glue them or anything. Um, there you go. Tuscan Raider, done. There you go that's how to build a tuscan raider so um if you want the parts to build your own i sell the diy kits on my website so that's jeddaworkshop.co.uk go and check it out um and since designing him i also did the tuscan chief from the book of boba fett and i don't have have one to hand because i've just made them all for customers and sent them out but you'll see on there as well multiple versions of um the book of boba fett style custom which is slightly different so the binoculars are wider and there's no slits the top spikes are shorter and fatter and there's a slightly higher placement um what else is different it's just like the color, the different colored wraps and stuff like that but yeah multiple Tuscan variations. You can make the warrior from the Book of Boba Fett kit, uh, the child, or your own completely custom, which um, a couple of my customers have, have done, which are wicked. So, there you go. What else do I have to talk about? Um, yeah, I've everything's going really well. I've got so many like new helmet designs. Um, have a look on the 3D file section on my website. Um, and I, I just plan on keep on building more and more and more helmets and armor and busts and weapons. Eventually, they're all coming soon. I also have a Patreon now. I don't I don't know if I ever officially announced that on YouTube. Um, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a place for you to support your favorite artists, and in return, you get cool stuff back. So I've tried to make it as awesome as possible for you lot. Whether you're a th a 3D printer, whether you're a helmet builder, um, I've just launched a new tier if you do custom figures. Um, I'm going to be creating a new section to my site where you can 
basically get all my helmets at one one sixth scale, I think it is, or one, uh, 12 inch, and then the, the little six inch as well, so that they're sort of resin print ready and you can customize anything, basically. Um, so yeah, head, head on over there. That's patreon.com forward slash Jedi Workshop. Um, there's, there, there's stuff for everyone there, even just the mildly intrigued. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, and that's just the same, at Jedi Workshop. Um, through Patreon, I'll just jump back as well. Um, I've, I have a private Facebook community group called the Lovely Makers Group. And it is full of lovely makers in there. So that's people who are my patrons. And they're from completely different backgrounds and do completely different stuff. Um, what links them all is Star Wars and their love of Star Wars. And the fact that they're all really genuinely lovely people. So you've got like professional builders on there that, that do stuff like me that make... I wouldn't call me a professional, but you know what I mean. <laughs> they make helmets for a living. Um, you've got hobbyists. You've got people who are complete beginners and everyone posts in there and shares tips and helps each other out or just says, hello, how are you doing? And yeah, through the Patreon, you get access to that. It's also where I share all my early content, so brand new helmet designs. Um, I ask people what they want designing next in there. I, I, did, I, I share crazy weird stuff from my life. Everything Jedi Workshop, basically. Or every time I do something wrong when I'm building and I'm like, no, I put it in there so you can all laugh at me. <laughs> but yeah, that's me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And do I say this? Do I say this? I'm going to say it. I plan on getting a build video out every week from now on. I'm going to hold myself to it. I've got so many videos, so much just footage on my computer from, I basically record every single new build that I do and just stick it all on a hard drive and then never edit it. But I'm gonna do it. Every Friday is gonna be edit day from now on. That's it, I've said it, I've said it, I'm holding myself to it. So subscribe if you're new here, hit the bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. I'll, I obviously also announce it on Instagram and Facebook, things like that, but yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Um, if if you are a continued supporter, thank you so much. It really means the world to me, honestly. There's been some dark days this year, man. I'm, I don't know about everybody else, but whew, this year has been intense. It seems more intense than last year, which was more intense than the year before, which was more intense than the year before. It's just, it's just going like this. <sighs> But I think that's a good thing because, uh, you know, you can't build something new without something first being destroyed, can you? So newness, freshness. I've got a new logo. It's actually just the exact same logo, but with new colours. Uh, <laughs> just colours that I like. Right, I'm going to shut up now because I'll just start talking about the uh, what I had for breakfast. I haven't even had breakfast. I don't even eat breakfast. Might go have breakfast. Peace. Oh yeah. One more thing. Doesn't sound so bad to me.